Hello welcome to IT Expert YouTube video series. Today we are going to talk about estimate project cost. Why is cost estimation important in project management? Estimating costs is one of the core activities of project management and planning. This is because a project is defined as being subject to at least three fundamental constraints scope, budget and time. Cost estimates are obviously addressing the budget constraint hence they are highly relevant for the management of a project. The initial rough cost estimate is usually included in the project charter as well as in the business case of a project. The estimation of costs is also necessary to compute the project budget which is subject to the approval of the project sponsor. In fact, the process determined budget uses a technique called cost aggregation which directly refers to the outputs of the estimate cost process. Cost estimates are the basis for allocating budget to work packages and deliverables which can be politically sensitive within a project as well as among its stakeholders. Therefore, budget determination and assignment require some stakeholder involvement, communication and, in many cases, their approval. In addition, cost estimates are input parameters for the earned value and variance analyzes as well as forecasting of project costs. How to accurately estimate the cost of a project? Estimating the cost of a project requires breaking it down into individual tasks and figuring out which team members will be doing what. Once a project is up and running, the key goal is to make sure you don't overspend and derail your budget. Project cost estimating is a process that can be broken down into five steps. Compile a list of tasks and the resources required to complete them. Identify and allocate resources to tasks based on your team's capacity. Estimate the task length to create a project schedule with some buffer. Calculate the project cost based on a chosen estimation method. Use project cost estimating tools to track budgets in real time. Three methods of project cost estimating. A project scope should dictate its budget, not the other way around. Here are three calculations you can use for accurate project cost estimating. One. Ballpark Estimate A ballpark estimate will give you an approximate value of a project based on speculation. Does your client know their budget? If not, a ballpark calculation will give you a rough estimate to offer your client to see if they can afford a project before it kicks off. Usually, this calculation is a combination of similar projects you have done in the past as well as any expenses unique to the particular project. Let's say your client needs a website built and your team has done similar projects in the past for $10,000. Using the ballpark estimate, the cost might range from minus 25% to plus 50%. Simple, right? Yep. Although it's not the most detailed way to estimate the cost of a project. 2. Parameter Estimation Parameter estimation is a data-driven approach to project cost estimating. It uses past data to give you a more reliable estimate of a project's overall cost. First, calculate how much time will be spent on each task on your list. Next, add a cost figure by multiplying the hours of each task with each team member's hourly rate. Task duration A tilde, employee's hourly rate equal to task cost. Once you have calculated the cost for every task, add them all up to reach an estimated total. Although this method is more time-consuming than a ballpark figure, it's also more accurate. It works best for projects that have concrete start and end points for tasks, like social media management. Calculate tasks costs with resource scheduling software. Resource scheduling software is a great way to calculate task costs reliably and efficiently. Set the billable hourly rate for each of your team members so you can quickly see the cost of assigned tasks against your project's total budget. It also removes the risk of any human error of manually entering data into a spreadsheet. 3. Three-point estimation A three-point estimation is a way to calculate a project's cost based on likely, optimistic, and pessimistic cost projections. The benefit of a three-point estimation is that it ties a project's cost to uncertainties and risks, which allows you to plan for worst-case scenarios. Let's take our earlier example of building a new website, which costs around $10,000. Your costs could look like this. These three figures become a basis for building an average estimate. Simply add them together and divide by three. 
10,000 plus 7,500 plus 15,000 equal to 32,500. 32,500 divide 3 equal to 10,833. As a result, the average project estimate is $10,833. Make sure that if you hear using the three-point estimation, you hear still accounting for time buffers and overheads. Futur Christu reiterates the importance of accounting for overheads in a project cost estimate, saying it's key to turning a profit. He says it's essential to mark up costs and not underestimate how long a job will take while remembering to budget for other things like software costs. Project Management Cost Estimating Techniques One of the first tasks when managing a project is the cost estimate. A cost estimate must be accurate, transparent, and reliable. These factors are particularly important for a small business because its resources are limited. Using standard techniques lets you see the details of the cost calculations. Such techniques give accurate results, and their reliability is high as long as the inputs used for the calculations are exact. When you calculate project costs using effective cost estimating techniques, you will be able to assign corresponding resources and develop schedules to manage the project successfully. Resource Costing A common technique for cost estimating is to list the resources you need for the project and to total their costs. Typical resources include equipment, material, services and labor. You can get costs for equipment, material and services by consulting price lists, or by going out for bids for the larger pieces. Labor costs are hourly, and you can base the total costs on estimates from similar projects or ask for bids to carry out the work. Small businesses use resource costing for larger or more complicated projects. Unit Costs Small or simple projects can be evaluated using a cost per unit that is characteristic of the project. The characteristic unit is a measure of the size of the project that is indicative for the particular project. It might be a cubic foot, a square foot or a workstation. Typical applications are for building costs, paving, renovating or for standard systems such as data processing. Costs are a dollar amount per unit. To get the total cost, you decide how large the building or surface is or how many people will be working on the data. Multiply that by the unit cost to get the total. You can get typical unit costs from prospective suppliers or from industry associations. Empirical Methods If your project is typical of your industry and businesses have completed similar projects over the past few years, an empirical approach can be highly accurate and take the least time. To use this approach, you usually have to buy software or a paper-based system that contains statistical information about the other, completed projects. You choose the characteristics that apply to your project from a list, fill in the overall parameters such as size and location, and ask for the cost breakdown. The system will provide typical costs for that kind of project. Consultants active in your industry will have information on empirical systems and might be able to supply them. Historical Costing One of the most transparent ways of estimating the cost of a project is to base it on previous work. If your company has completed a similar project recently, all the required costing information is available from the project files. If you don't have such a project, other work your company has done in the past can help determine the cost of similar work on the new project. If a local business that is not a competitor has completed a similar project, it might be willing to help. Where available, historical data often gives the most accurate prediction of future costs. Rough order of magnitude versus definitive estimate. The obvious difference between these two types of estimates is the accuracy the ROM is rather inaccurate with a broad range of possible outcomes. It is therefore typically used in project initiation phases where a ballpark figure is sufficient to get a project started. The definitive estimate is determined in the course of the project when more information and resources for accurate estimates are available. Read this article for more details on the ROM and the differences between ROM and definitive estimate. Interview question and answer 1. Are you familiar with the Construction Specifications Institute format for writing construction estimates? The interviewer may ask you a question like this to see if you have experience writing construction estimates in the CSI format. This is one of the most common formats for creating construction estimates, 
and it's important that any cost estimator you hire be familiar with it. In your answer, try to show that you are indeed familiar with the format by describing how you use it. Example I am very familiar with the CSI format because I have used it throughout my career. It's an excellent way to create accurate estimates because it provides clear instructions on what materials and equipment you need for each part of a project. When I write estimates using the CSI format, I always make sure to include all relevant information so there are not any misunderstandings about what I'm providing. 2. What are some of the most important factors you consider when estimating the cost of a project? This question can help the interviewer assess your knowledge of cost estimation and how you apply it to projects. Use examples from past experience that show your ability to consider all aspects of a project, including materials, labor costs, and other factors that affect the final price. Example I always start by researching the client's needs and what they expect from the finished product. This helps me understand their budget and find ways to reduce the overall cost of the project while still meeting the client's expectations. I also consider the location of the project, as this can impact the cost of transportation and supplies. Finally, I look at the timeline for the project so I can estimate any overtime or rush fees that may be necessary. 3. How would you explain the difference between a direct and an indirect cost? This question is a great way to test your knowledge of the cost accounting process. It also allows you to show that you can clearly and concisely explain complex processes in an easy-to-understand manner. When answering this question, try to use simple language and avoid using jargon or acronyms unless they are defined. Example direct costs are those that can be easily traced back to a specific project. For example, if I am working on a construction project, my direct costs would include things like materials, labor and equipment rental. Indirect costs are more difficult to trace back to a specific project because they are shared across multiple projects. These costs include things like rent, utilities and insurance. 4. What is your process for determining the labor costs for a project? The interviewer may ask you a question like this to understand your process for completing tasks and how you apply your knowledge of the construction industry. Use examples from past projects to explain your thought process, including any steps you take to ensure accuracy in your estimates. Example I start by researching the labor costs for each trade on the project. I look at local wage rates as well as national averages to determine which is more appropriate for the project. Then, I consider whether or not there are any additional expenses that might affect the cost of labor, such as overtime pay or if the company has a contract with a union. After determining the labor costs, I add 10% to account for any unexpected expenses. 5. Provide an example of a time when you had to revise an initial cost estimate and explain your reasoning. An interviewer may ask this question to learn more about your critical thinking and problem-solving skills. They want to know that you can make adjustments when necessary, but also explain why you made the changes so they understand your thought process. Thank you for watching this video. We provide hands-on training with Labs Homework Group Projects Prepare you for the certification Provide real projects Internship opportunities Support you in Resume LinkedIn Staffing support Provide tech references In-person online class Class retake options and more Call us at 847-350-9034 for your free career consultation meeting Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for the latest videos.